also uh, a relief, an example of a relief organization, and then MTN, and I think this was a really key part of the partnership, someone who could commercially help us distribute and market this, which I think is the big challenge um, for, you know, we've talked about, you know, you can design a software, you can design a technology, but if people don't hear about it, and there's no commercial force, I think, behind marketing and distributing it, it it's, it's unlikely to reach people. So that's why we worked with those four partners. And could you talk a little bit about how people, what, what the process is that people go through just to buy your, your, your um, a piece of equipment? Like, how does it go down in the field? Um, well, what, because our, our product can charge phones on a, commercial, on a commercial scale in the village, it can charge 10 to 20 phones in a day, MTA uh, is very excited about putting marketing dollars behind this and making sure it's, it's in their distribution network, which is nationwide. For me, what's so exciting is uh, the telecoms have such a broad reach, probably, you know, approaching Coca-Cola's reach, and they have an incentive to drive this product. And so MTN has been instrumental. They've marketed this um, in the most rural areas, including, uh, we're actually working with them on a proposal to go up to Karamoja right now with this product because connectivity in Karamoja is a key business challenge for them, so they're excited to push this product, which has development and relief implications as well, which is exciting. For me, and so that's really a customer just needs to walk into an MTN store. Um, they can also purchase it from us, and we do strategic partnerships with NGOs. But for me, what's great is you could walk into a small retail outlet uh, in many different areas of this country and purchase it. So, and when when I was talking to um, to your your um, your colleague, um, it, so for for Ugandan, it sounds like this takes about two weeks' salary. So, how do you go through this process of having them? commit to something that may save the money in the long run, may have health benefits, but it's a lot of money up front. Yeah, I mean, that is our, I would say that, it, and consumer financing is our number one challenge. Um, before joining Phoenix, I did try to work with MFIs to create financing for solar products and home solar, oh sorry, microfinance institutions or commercial banks that have a rural focus, such as Centenary Bank in Uganda. Um, and I think, I will say that the, the banks are more willing to fund the ready set because it has income generating potential, which most solar products right now are just home lighting. Um, and so I think that when you can create products that show income potential, I think the banks are more willing to come in with the financing when previously they're they're very resistant to that. So so let's say I'm you gone and I'm in the middle of nowhere, I go to like, buy my mobile phone, I see this charger, how do I get the loan then? Does MTN do the loan distribution as well? Or? No, um, no, that's something that you, a customer would have to go to a bank, and, and they, they're, most customers in Uganda are pretty familiar with the process of going to get a loan through these banks. Now, so, now, not all of them are excited about it, so that's one of the key challenges we have, is there is a fear and, and kind of an aversion to some of the, the loan products because they're very high interest rates, very high risk if you aren't able to repay. And so that's something that we're currently working on. We're working on, um, uh, I guess to give you a glimpse of the future, to address that issue, we're working on embedding technology into the ready set that would allow us to turn it off if somebody stopped making a payment, which will then reduce the risk for finance institutions, but it also would allow someone like MTN to potentially manage this financing themselves and allow people to pay as they go. So just as they would pay for kerosene, they could pay, they could top up our product and pay for it on a daily basis. So we found that this end consumer challenge, this end consumer financing is such a big challenge that we want to address it with software built into the ready set moving forward. That's awesome. So um, as far as the, the RAN, so, so just to highlight some of the things from, from Phoenix's idea, they don't just have um, the, the bottom of the pyramid as their customers, right? They also have other high paying customers like Google um, to help offset serving the bottom of the pyramid. So that's one thing to look for when you're talking about providing solutions. Um, distribution is another thing. So we'll help you guys develop in-country partners. Um, so, so these are the sorts of, I just want to kind of highlight what, what the key things are and to build on what Lindsay said that, because you guys are getting into, you know, you, you guys are academics and getting into this entrepreneurial space. Um, we don't necessarily want you guys to become entrepreneurs or business managers. We will help you with this. But these are some of the key lessons learned uh, from these sorts of ideas, and we'll continue to give you more examples of success on the ground to, to learn from. Um, so I think what I'd like to do right now is uh, move to uh, the university setting. So you guys are academics, you are housed in universities, we've been talking about businesses, we've been talking about ministries, this may not have a lot of relation to what you guys do. 
So what I'd like to do now is have Florence talk about innovation programs that happen in the university so you can help kind of understand how these concepts may work in, in existing